in an hour and uh, to have a good meal uh, when we came to the church here. So um, thank you everybody who welcomed us. We're excited to be here. I'm excited to start serving as your pastor here. If you look at our bulletin, we've got some upcoming events. Uh, pastor Fowler is leading, continuing to lead a six-week Bible study <coughs> on Jesus and women. And so you can find the Zoom information uh, on your bulletin. Uh, we're still continuing to recommend people wear masks uh, so that we can try to mitigate any spread of the virus, so thank you for doing that. You'll notice that there's a table in the narthex that has bookmarks, um, so you're free to take a bookmark uh, with you. I understand that this is a way to remember the season that we've had without a pastor, um, the, the challenges and the joys that it brought, and so if you want to take one of those, come remind yourself of that as you're starting this new chapter in our ministry together. Um, also, I do want to make mention that the flowers today um, are also in celebration of a wedding anniversary for Clarice and Raymond. And so I just want to congratulate them and let's congratulate them on their wedding. Is that better? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want me to go through all the announcements again? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. Well, please rise as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors in eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 to 11 and 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years. And there are four, five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. We'll read our psalm responsively. at Psalm 37. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall be withered like grass, and like the green grass they live. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your way to the Lord, put your trust in the Lord, and see what God will do. The Lord will make your recreation as the rare delight, and the best of your good faith, like the new sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. <laughs> For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. But the lowly shall possess the land, they will delight in abundance of peace. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because in you they seek refuge.
Our second reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 35 to 38 and 42 to 50. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Be All the children are invited to come forward for a children's message. Or those who are young in heart. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. You can always stay in your pews, too. It's okay. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Good. Oh, my gosh. You guys are all matching. Are you all related? No. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <laughs> 
Well, this morning, um, we're going to hear about um, Jesus asking us to love our enemies. And one of the first ways, that's, that's kind of a hard thing to do that Jesus asks us to do, but one of the first ways that can help us to try to do that is to start by knowing that Jesus loves us. So I have a story. I grew up in the church. Uh, my home congregation is also called Trinity Lutheran Church, and it's a couple hours from here. Come on up. And one thing my pastor would always do, there's a seat right here for you, if you'd like. One thing my pastor would always do before we were able, old enough to receive communion, is we'd receive a blessing. And the one thing he'd always say is, the one thing you can always remember and never forget is that Jesus loves you. And so he would say that to us, but after a while, we'd remember that, and he would ask us, what's the one thing you always remember and never forget? And we say, Jesus loves us. And a while later, after I had grown up a bit, he passed away, and we all gathered to celebrate his life. And our youth director got all of our kids together and said to us, what is the one thing you, will, don't, you can always remember and never forget? And we all said, Jesus loves us. And it seems pretty simple, but it's just that simple thing to know that Jesus loves you no matter what, that you don't have to do anything to get it, there's nothing you could do to lose it, but that God loves you, that Jesus loves you. So we're going to end in a little word of prayer. And at the end of the prayers, I like to end them with, we love you, and you cross your hands like this, and we praise you, but praise hands, and amen, and it claps really loud. You want to try that with me at the end of our prayer? We'll just try it out. We'll see how it goes. All right, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for your love. Help us to feel that love and to show that love to others. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. You can head back. Thank you. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the sixth chapter. Glory Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do that same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure that you get back. The word of the Lord.
please be seated. There is an epidemic that is running wild in our community and in our country. It rages in our schools, neighborhoods, workplaces, and churches. It rages in our families, our friends, political parties, and in ourselves. And I'm not talking about COVID. Although the reality of a pandemic that has spanned two years has certainly contributed to this epidemic's growth. The epidemic that I'm talking about is hatred. Hatred towards our neighbors, hatred towards those who think differently from us, who act differently than us, hatred towards our enemies. This hatred, fueled by a seemingly never-ending pandemic and divided politics, has presented itself in outbursts of violence, angry yelling matches, and a sea of disappointment, frustration, and stress. This morning, Jesus' very first request for us is to love. Jesus asks us to do good to others, to think well of others. Jesus asks us to pray for, bless, and give to others. And we are asked to do this not just to those who like us, who are like us, not just to those we like. Jesus asks us to love our enemies, the very people we hate, the people who make our lives difficult, the people who make the lives of those we care about difficult. That's a pretty big request from Jesus. And it requires some pretty big changes to how we view and treat and speak to and about our enemies. First of all, It's challenging because I think we might have a misunderstanding about love. Love is sometimes viewed as weak, while anger or vengeance is seen as strong. Love towards our enemies can be seen as cowardly. Am I just going to let people hurt me and hurt others? Am I just going to be a doormat for people to walk all over? Vengeance and anger and hatred are much easier feelings to express than fear and sadness and anxiety. And I think sometimes we really like our anger. It's like a rush, feeling entitled, feeling angry. Your adrenaline is pumping, your thoughts are racing, It feels like you're strong enough to lift a car or throw a punch. It feels like you could win an argument or you could yell loud enough that people across town would hear you. Anger and hatred can be addictive. A momentary sense of relief from an otherwise unending stream of stress and frustration and despair. And while it may feel good at the time, it can ultimately lead to some worse situations. Think about the last time that you got really angry. What were you feeling? What did you say or do? Now raise your hand if you were really happy with how you handled that situation. Not many hands, in fact, no hands raised. (laughs) Maybe you don't even really want to think about it. You seemed like a different person in those moments. You said things and did things that you now regret. We've all done it. 
It's okay to feel angry. We can't control our feelings, but we can make ourselves aware of them and ask ourselves why we are feeling what we are. We are all dealing with unimaginable amount of change and suffering in this pandemic and in this time in our country and the world. And there's, of course, other events and situations in your own lives that can cause grief and frustration. No one is alone in this. And Jesus is certainly with us and can help us. Because to Jesus, love is not weak or submissive. Love is fierce and powerful. And Jesus loves you with an unimaginable amount of ferocity. Jesus tells us to be merciful, just as our Father is merciful. God shows us mercy even in our weakness, sinfulness, and brokenness. God loves us despite our failings. And God's love can fill us back up when we feel empty or burned out. Even if we feel like we don't deserve it, God loves us. And that's the kind of love that God calls us to show our enemies. They are in the same boat that we are in respect to God, undeserving and unworthy of God's love. And yet, God is kind and loving towards those who are ungrateful or wicked as it says in our reading today. We are called to live in God's way of love, and Jesus is here to help us do it, to be caught up, to be healed, to let go of our hostilities that hold us captive, to receive and live mercy. There are some real harmful effects to us caused by the consuming nature of anger and hatred Jesus calls us to love our enemies. And this can be the greatest compassion, not only to our neighbors and our enemies, but it can be the greatest compassion to ourselves. Jesus is calling us and helping us to be transformed by God's mercy and love. As we head into Transfiguration Sunday next week and the season of Lent right after, know that you are capable of change, and that your neighbor and your enemies are capable of change too. Jesus provides us an overflowing stream of generosity and abundance that can replace the overwhelming realities of hatred and hostility within us and within our country. Our love for our enemies, supported and sustained by Christ, can send a different, more life-giving energy into the world. This energy is desperately needed, now more than ever, and it is a gift to you, it's a gift to this congregation and community, and it is a gift to the world that is freely given by God. Amen.
We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. All of our council members are invited to come forward for their installation. Just want to <laughs> make sure there's enough room for everybody. <laughs> All right. The following people have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us into our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. Peggy Nipple, Derek Shelley, Matt Snyder, Susan Hackenberry, Dot Spankick, Jerry Wagner, Cheryl Wilson, Betty Ryan, Angela Monteleone, Chuck Rischel, John Monteleone. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them to everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church and in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, please answer together. I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Thank you. Please turn and face the congregation. The congregation, please rise. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? We will, and we ask God to help us. And you can turn around and face me again. I now declare to you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct you in your days, in your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen.
Please congratulate them with a round of applause. Thank you, you can return to your pews. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all those lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially Dale, Donna, Beth, Denny, Ruby, and Carl, and all others we now name. God of grace, Hear our prayer. you bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Please be with me. <laughs> You may be seated. Come to God's table, there is a place for you and enough for all. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with your heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God come for the banquet is now prepared. Amen. Please be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the riches of your grace. In your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we conclude our service, you're all welcome to come back for our social hour. You'll notice that there are name tags with pens back on the table there. It'd be super helpful for Greg and I <laughs> if everybody could wear a name tag for the next few weeks so we get to know each other. Please receive the blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.